Hello, happy Sabbath day. This is May 12th, 2018. Sorry I've been gone for a while, I'm trying to get ready to get out of here, but uh, let's do a little Bible study here. This Bible study is going to be on pearls, or a pearl. And yes, we're going to do the uh, parable that's listed in Matthew 13. But before we do, let's take a look at some of the things that the Bible says about pearls. All right, go to the book of Job, which is one of the, well, it appears to be the first mention. You know, one of the things when you do a Bible study, especially, uh, this is why I recommend the King James and the people that, um, you know, bash the King James and says, well, you're in a cult if you believe the King James. Well, those people are either misled or they're Satanists, they're devils. Uh, the thing is, the modern versions totally destroy the first mention of a word. See, what they do for the copyright is they change the words. For example, if you look up in the King James, there's like eight or nine times the word pearl or pearls appears in the Bible. They will change the words so that in the King James, the first time a word is mentioned gives you, when you read the context, it gives you an idea of the theme or the meaning of that word. The modern Bibles totally destroy that. They totally destroy it. They change the context. They leave out things. So, you know, that's why I'm so adamant about the... Um, the King James. All right, Job 28, and we're going to start in verse 16. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. It seems that the uh, Ophir had some very, very pure gold. I'm not sure if the gold itself being mined was pure or if it was their process of refining the gold. But verse 17, the gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, nor shall it be valued with pure gold. And they're talking about wisdom. Now, what is wisdom that the Bible talks about? Well, let's take a look. Wisdom, the first time it appears, is in Exodus 28, verse 3. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled... And this is God speaking, whom I have filled with the spirit, spirit of wisdom, that they, make, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Aaron, brother of Moses, he was the priest that ministered unto God. He was of the tribe of Levi. In Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9, Moses is getting ready to die. Now, if you notice the Bible, it's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Then the next book is Joshua. Joshua led Israel after uh, Moses died. And it says, And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hand hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. In 1 Kings 4.29, it says, And God gave Solomon, you know, Solomon, the son of King David, King Solomon, he was 
reputed in the Bible to be the wisest man that ever lived. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Uh, in Second Chronicles chapter 1, in verse 10, uh, God had asked Solomon, you know, what do you want? You know, you're going to be king of Israel. So this is what Solomon said. He said, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, Neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself. And why did he ask that? He wanted to be a good ruler. I mean, he didn't say, oh, well, make me live a long time. Give me health like the prosperity preachers on TBN. And he didn't say, give me millions and millions of dollars. No. He says, make me have the knowledge to be a good ruler. And God honored this. But thou hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, for thou mayest judge my people whom over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. Do you know in the time of Solomon, silver was counted as nothing. The Bible even says that silver was counted as nothing. I mean, it's like, it was like a, you know, a penny in the United States. Pennies are absolutely useless. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, you could buy three Tootsie Rolls, large ones, three Tootsie Rolls for a penny. You know, a penny was worth something, but uh, they have so diluted our money supply by just printing, 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 printing money that um, a, pen, a penny's become useless, but I, I, never mind. All right, so in, uh, when they were talking about pearls and wisdom, what is wisdom? Well, Psalms 111, 111 and verse 10 tells you, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do, that do, that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. All right, Proverbs 1, 7. Chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. All right, Proverbs 16 and verse 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? You think about it. Gold's only good when you're on earth, right? You know, but wisdom of the Lord and his ways lasts forever. Gold's only good until the day you die. So how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? And to get understanding, rather, to be chosen than silver. Now, this is interesting. Proverbs 23, 23. It says, buy the truth. B-U-Y, as in purchase. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. But when it says buy, you know, like purchase, B-U-Y, per personally, I think it's by, um, when it's talking, I think it's talking about our usage of our time. I think that it's, you know, it's not talking about opening up your wallet and giving out money or whatever, you know, uh, that's, but that's just my opinion. So, all right, let's go back 
uh, in Job 28, 18, no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. Okay, so just a little background there. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to take a look at this. Now, I've heard that parables were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning or application. And that's true to, to an extent, but sometimes pro, uh, parables were coming future prophecies, sometimes in the near future, sometimes in the latter days, which people have been saying we have are in the latter days for the last almost 2,000 years, but there has to be a time running out. So, All right, let's go take a look at Matthew chapter 7. All right, Matthew 7 and verse 6. Think on this carefully. It says, Give not, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Is it talking about two-legged dogs or four-legged dogs? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Swine have huge tusks, large teeth, and when they rend you, they, they rip you into shreds. Anybody see Old Yeller? That old Disney movie, what happened to old Yeller, the dog? He got killed by swine. All right, what are we talking about here? Don't give that which is holy unto the dogs. Let's take a look. What is a dog? Simple. Use the Bible to interpret the Bible. You don't need commentaries written by an antichrist minister they got all his stuff from a rabbi now Deuteronomy 23 verse 17 there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel you know it's sad if the Western Christian world is Israel you know, I kind of wonder if you went to a typical high school now, if if there would be three or five girls that are even virgins by the time they graduate from high school today. I, you, you know, and how can I talk bad about, you know, the girls that are whores? Because I was a whoremonger. I mean, you know, so what can I tell you? There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Now, this is called parallelism. So I said there shouldn't be a whore and there shouldn't be a son, uh, sodomites. Verse 18. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even these are abomination under unto the Lord thy God. Parallelism. Sodomites are likened unto dogs. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, or the price of a dog, into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even these, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So what's a dog? According to the Bible, a sodomite. You know, in uh, Matthew chapter 8, 
Jesus cast a bunch of devils out of a guy and they went into a herd of swine. And the swine didn't want to be possessed of devils, so they actually ran down a hill, jumped into the water, and drowned rather than be possessed of a devil, a bunch of devils. It's, you know, what can I tell you? So let's read that again. Matthew 7, and verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Cast ye your neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Does that uh, give you some new meaning to what this actually means? I hope so. All right, let's go back. Where else does pearls appear? All right, go to Matthew chapter 13. In verse 10, it says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Who's the him? Jesus. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, He being Jesus, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Jesus answered, Because, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Do you ever wonder why when you witness to Mormons that, you know, Mormons teach that Jesus is Satan's brother, I mean, really? You want Satan's brother as your savior? Or Jehovah's Witnesses that teach that Jesus is just an angel named Michael? When the Bible records that, you know, Christ created all things in John chapter 1. I mean, they dishonor Christ. And the modern Bibles dishonor Christ. The King James lifts Christ up. All the others lower him. The King James that teaches that God became man, and a lot of the other Bibles teach that man can become God. There's a big difference between that. Big difference. Read Genesis chapter 3. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Sorry, I, I don't think I can become God. But I do believe that God became man in the personage of Christ Jesus. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. See, they close their eyes. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and 
righteous men, have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. All right, let's skip down to verse 44, Matthew 13 and verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a uh, is like unto treasure hid in a field. Now remember that the treasure is hid in the field. The Bible is going to tell you what the field is. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. Well, what's the field? Uh, you know what? Verse 38 tells you. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares, or the weeds, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So let's skip down again. Verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. What's the treasure? Israel, the Christians, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Huh. So if, who's the man that found that hideth and goes forth and sells all that he had and buys the field. Hmm. Did God buy this with money? No. Well, Acts chapter 20 and verse 26, chapter 20 and verse 26, starting there, gives you who purchased the field. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Who purchased the church with his own blood? If you don't know that, you're in bad, bad way. You need to read the Bible. Take heed unto your, uh, therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he, Christ, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And if you want to see the grievous words of uh, wolves, turn on TBN. Oh, yeah. All right, back to Matthew chapter 13. All right, let's go. Okay, so verse 44, it said, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he buyeth, I mean, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Does that make sense to you now? It does to me. Verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he hath found one pearl of great price, Israel, right? went and sold all that he had and bought it. Yeah, 
We were purchased with his blood. He gave everything that he had up to and including his life to buy us, to purchase us from, from sin and death. Now, <laughs> to be redeemed, uh, it has it's similar to being bought, okay? Revelation 5, 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain. Who was slain? Christ. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Hmm. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesus was a city in Greece and a church. All right, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest. Do you know what an earnest is? Uh, when you make a contract with somebody, let's say you're, you're going to buy a car and you put a down payment on it. Uh, that's in legal terms, that's an earnest which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. That's us. We're the purchased possession, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. You know, the Bible uses, the Bible's a legal document, people. You know, I, I, I used to do weddings, and I used to, I even talked to Harvard-educated lawyers, and Harvard used to be a Bible college. That's what it was started as, a Bible college. Now it's anything but. Now they teach classes in anal, how to have anal sex. I mean, how sick is that? It went from being a Bible college to a, forgive my language, a butthole. So, but um, yeah, the earnest of our inheritance, that means like a down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. You people are the pearl of great price that God went and sold all that he had. People don't get it. All right, uh, Matthew 13, 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Yeah, he shed his blood on the cross. He gave up his earthly life to buy this pearl. Do you wonder why in Matthew 7 and verse 6, Jesus said, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Don't give the holy things unto the dogs. All right, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Timothy's considered uh, one of the um, uh, pastoral, what they call pastoral epistles, or, you know, letters for pastors, advice for pastors. Um, a lot of people call me pastor, but I'm not a pastor. I, I do not meet the biblical qualifications of a pastor, 
but I try to be a Bible teacher. There's a big difference. So, uh, just don't call me Reverend. Reverend's the name of God, believe it or not. Yeah, let's take a look at that real quick. In Psalms 111, 111 uh, and verse 9, He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commended his covenant forever. What covenant? His covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, Israel. He hath commended his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. So when you hear uh, somebody running around calling themselves reverend, they're calling themselves by a name of God. I hate that name for, you know, the Bible says not to call any man rabbi. It says not to call any man father. You know, and it's not talking about your dad, all right? All right. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, the pastoral epistles. An epistle just means letter. It's just a fancy King's English word for letter. Uh, verse 7, 1 Timothy 2 and 7. Where unto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles or nations, same word. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Well, I don't see that too often. I've seen uh, women running around the grocery store with less clothes than I've seen girls on the beach with. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. You know, God doesn't want women running around with gold and pearls and costly stuff and you know embroidered hair and fancy hair works though but which becometh women professing godliness with good works all right there are two women mentioned in the bible there's the whore and there is the bride of christ and you're either one or the or the other. Let's go to Revelation chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit with a scarlet colored beast. You got the Lamb of God and then you got the beast. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. You know, I think the ten horns are the, you know, they're the ten kings. I think that has reference to the ten toes of the image that Daniel saw in his book. But I... I'm going to have to do some more research on that to be sure because um, I did a little trip and I got the uh, King James Bible on CD and I was listening to the book of Daniel and because uh, it's one of the books, it's a hard book and uh, ties into the end times. So, you know, if you're going to read, study Revelation, you need to study it with Daniel. So, all right, so let's read about the whore. Verse 4, And the woman, the whore, was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, 
and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Pearls! And having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. All right, let's go to Revelation 18. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his, his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Why did he say that twice? Well, Babylon was a mighty physical kingdom in the days of Daniel, and it fell to the Medes and the Persians. And by the way, modern Persia is Iran. And the Persians gave Judah permission to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild it. And they gave them all the stuff from the temple, all the gold and everything else. The, the Persians, the, who are the, the, their descendants are the modern-day Iranians, showed great kindness unto Judah. But the uh, synagogue of Satan wants to destroy the Iranians today. So what can I tell you? So Babylon, physical Babylon, fell. But it says here, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Well, now spiritual Babylon is going to fall. Physical Babylon is fallen, and now is fallen in the spiritual realm. So Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations, funny, it's the same word as Gentiles, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. You see, these pre-trib rapture people that say, Well, God would never pour out his wrath on his bride, the church. Well, guess what? If you don't come out of her, and you are partakers of her sins, you will receive of God's plagues. I mean, it says right here in Revelation 18 and verse 4, he, God warns you, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. All right, let's go to verse 5. For her sins... Mystery Babylon, the whore, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double, according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself. She didn't glorify the Lord Jesus, she glorified herself. And lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. You know, uh, who's the queen? She calls herself the queen of heaven. She goes by many names. Columbia is one of them. You ever wonder why Washington, D.C. was called the District of Columbia? 
Why is Lady Liberty in the, the Statue of Liberty in the harbor? Well, why, why is that a lady? You know, um, the Jews call her Lilith, L-I-L-I-T-H. She was the, uh, uh, don't get into it. If It's satanic. I mean, you can look it up if you want to, but I don't recommend it. Uh, Easter, Ishtar, she, she goes by many names. You can read about the Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah. God was angry. Uh... How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when... They shall see the smoke of her burning. Now, their um, nuclear explosions, if this is one of them, I'm not saying it is, I don't know, but uh, people have been able to see nuclear explosions for 50 miles away, you know, the smoke and everything. And... Uh, People will say, oh, well, Jerusalem can't be Mystery Babylon because it's it, they can see the, the, the smoke from the sea. You know, and then they'll, they'll tell you it's New York City or Mecca or whatever. But uh, uh, what can I tell you? Stand, verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls. Now, sometimes the Bible talks about pearls. It's talking about God's people. Other times it's talking about something that comes out of an oyster. Uh, do you know how oysters, why they create pearls? A piece of sand will uh, get into inside the oyster shell and you know sand's rough so the oyster will take it and coat, coat it with uh, the stuff that lines the shell, that it makes the shell with. And that's what creates a pearl. So it, you know, doesn't irritate its sensitive body. All right, back to verse 12. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stone and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and of manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. Now people will say, oh, well, this, see, this is proof of Rome because this is the colors they use. But if you look in the book of Leviticus, this is the same colors that the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood used in the temple. All this stuff is used in the Levitical priesthood of the temple, and I think the Vatican merely copied it. I mean, look it up. You know, turn off the TV. Don't believe me. Turn off the TV and read it for yourself. Book of Leviticus. But uh, most won't do that. Verse 13, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Let's keep reading this. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, 
Take a look at the breastplate of the uh, priest of Israel. Take a look and tell me that's not this. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust in their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. From one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. This tells you who this Babylon is. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Where were the prophets slain? All right, let's read Matthew 23. If you don't know what a Pharisee is, a Pharisee is a Jew. All Pharisees are Jews. Not all Jews are Pharisees, but all Pharisees are Jews. Matthew 23, verse 27, the words of Jesus. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye like unto whited sepulchers, which in indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Hmm. Are you starting to get the idea? Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets, prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues. Who hangs out in the synagogues? Not Catholics, right? Some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets... That tells you right there who Mystery Babylon that killed the prophets is. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, 
even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye, ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Matthew 18.24, speaking of mystery of Babylon, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So when you hear New York City, Mecca, Rome, sorry, the Bible explains the Bible. You don't need commentaries and lying preachers to tell you lies. Believe the words of Jesus. All right, so I told you there's two women in the Bible. There's the whore, and then there's the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ came to redeem the pearl. Well, let's read about that. this in Matthew. I'm sorry, no, no, not Matthew. Revelation chapter 21, and we're going to close this study out. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem. Why is there a new Jerusalem? Because the old city wasn't holy. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned, for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Now remember something, people. The New Testament was written in Greek. It's not the Alev Tov. It's the Alpha and Omega. Alpha, that's where we get our word, uh, what we call the English alphabet, comes from alpha, beta, A and B of the Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. The Old Testament was in Hebrew, but not the New Testament. New Testament was in Greek. And there's a reason for that. And he said unto me, it is done, I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and Omega was the last letter. He's basically saying, I am A to Z. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Remember the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman? I did a study on that. Verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers, whoremongers with the, the, the whore, right? And saucers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Who's the bride, the lamb's wife? The Bible's going to tell you who this is. The, the Bible tells you, oh, well, that's the Gentiles, the non-Jews. Really? You sure? You sure about that? Verse 10, And it carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Verse 12. This will tell you who the bride is and who's going to be in Jerusalem. 
and had a wall high and great and had 12 gates. 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. And names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Doesn't sound, where's the 13th Gentile gate? Where is it? There's only 12 gates. Where, ask, ask your Baptist or whatever Bible pastor, where's the 13th Gentile gate? You know, you listen to their preachings, you're not going to be allowed in the, if you're just a Gentile, saved by grace, and you're not an Israelite, well, pfft, you're not going into the New Jerusalem. You're not going to be there because there's no 13th Gentile gate. Unless you listen to Billy Graham. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates at the gates, 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. When you look up the uh, in the book of the books of Moses, uh, that's how the armies of Israel were. There were three tribes on the north, three on the south, three on the east, and three on the west. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Hmm. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, and the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof and 140 and four cubits according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third of chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sard sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophorus, I don't know how to pronounce it, the eleventh adjacent Jathanth, and the twelfth, and Amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Twelve pearls. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Don't I always quote John 8, 12? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Oh, yeah. Verse 24. And the nations, same word as the Gentiles. It's the same word. Sometimes they translated the word for uh, the Greek word for nations and Gentiles is the word ethnos. That's where we get the word ethnic group or ethnic from. You've heard of ethnic groups, you know, whites, blacks, Hispanics. Ethnos, Greek word. Sometimes translated as nations, sometimes translated as Gentiles. Same word. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gate of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. They shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter in anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And that concludes this Bible study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world and everything to his glory and of the Father and of the Holy Spirit.
all one God, world without end. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. This is Chaplain Bob Walker signing off. Uh, people, I hope to retire soon, and you know, one day I might ask, uh, I've been doing this for, well, I've been doing Bible stuff for over 20 years. Uh, well, around 20 years. And uh, almost never asked for uh, donations, but you know, I'm going to retire, hopefully, soon, God willing, and my income is going to be dropping down to half. I hope, uh, you know, some of you will consider, you know, whatever you could afford, a uh, thing on Patreon, maybe five bucks a month. I mean, if uh, just 10% of my listeners uh, gave me 5% of, uh, of my subscribers gave me $5 a month, uh, I'd actually, it would totally match what I'm making now and I could work full time, you know, doing Bible studies. But, uh, but you know what? A lot of you people have it worse than I do. So, you know, that's why I don't, I've never been a one for begging for donations. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, and glory up to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world in Jesus' precious name. Amen.